Thanks for listening to me.
bold and underlined. Children of God, it's time to take oh, off our shoes. <laughs> Step out of your comfort zone and wave with trust in the stream of God's mercy. Stand still for a moment, a barefoot, on holy ground. Let the healing waters wash your feet. Take a deep breath as love soaks into your soul. Be silent and listen for God's word to us today. We are here, O oh God. We welcome your presence with us. Let us worship. Our opening hymn is God is Here. Let us sing together. Let us see 
that systems are broken, that relationships are broken. Let us be willing to be the healing we wish to see in the world. Let us not rush past the loss of the mother's child, the father's child, someone's beloved. Let us not value property over people. Let us not protect material objects while human lives hang in the balance. Let us not be afraid to sit with the ugliness, the messiness, and the pain that is life and community together. Let us not offer cliches to the grieving. Instead, let us mourn and lament the loss of life. Let us call for the mourning men and wailing women, those who are rending their garments of privilege and ease, and let us be okay at sitting in the ashes of our original sin. Let us be silent when we don't know what to say. Let us be humble and listen to the pain, the grief pouring from the lips of our neighbors and friends. Let us pray with our eyes open, our feet firmly planted on holy ground, and listen. For it is in your name, O oh God, that we gather for worship and that we lament as one and pray. Amen. Good morning again. So great to see each and every one of you. Welcome to the Vine United Methodist Church. I'm Susan Hefner Hume. I'm thrilled to be pastor here at the Vine and glad to gather together with you during this Lenten season. Let me just call attention to um, a few announcements, some things that are happening in the life of the church. Um, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. We are going to be gathering at 1030. I know, times have changed and fluctuated. Welcome to life after COVID 2022. Things change, and so I appreciate your agility. Uh, so next Sunday and on Easter, we are gathering at 1030. And let's see, Kendall Rose and Cal back there and all other kids, we're going to invite you to come. Look at you getting all big. <laughs> Kendall, goodness gracious. Um, we are going to invite all the children to come and gather. Um, we're going to have palms for them. them. And if they've been with me, um, they've heard a song that just get ready, y'all. It'll stick in your head and you're going to be singing it all next week. Uh, the kids are going to kind of lead the Palm Sunday Parade next Sunday, so we are excited about that. So I hope you will be with us. And then on Easter Sunday, we will gather at 1030. And again, if there are kids here, I've got egg shakers and streamers. It's going to be a lot of fun as we say, sing hallelujahs together. On Holy Thursday, Maundy Thursday, we are going to have a brief time of worship and a pause in the week to acknowledge that, especially in the season of lament, that there is pain that had to happen before Easter Sunday. So we will gather at noon on Holy Thursday for um, an opportunity to have worship together and communion together. So that is happening on Holy Thursday. On May 1st, we are going to gather together downstairs in the fellowship hall around food. I mean, Worship and food. It doesn't get any better than that. So we are going to have what we like to call a dinner church opportunity. So bring some food, bring some covered dish meals, um, and then we're going to um, enjoy fellowship around the table and worship around the table. And that is happening on May 1st. Next Sunday, feel free to just wear what's comfortable for you next Sunday because we really need you to stick around after church and help us spruce up and get things ready for Easter. So if you are able to hang around after church, the more hands we have, it should just go like this, and then you can go grab pizza, a house of pizza after, um, or go grab some lunch, go grab a sub or something. Uh, but we do need some help in sprucing up, just making sure that everything is shiny and beautiful and clean for Easter Sunday. There have been, it's gone out in the email, 
but um, if you don't get the email, just to let you know, if you are interested in participating in a new small group that Julie Hoffman is leading on what it means to be white in the church, um, give me a, you can either contact me or contact Julie directly. That class will be starting soon. And um, also, if you have an interest in giving the gift of life and blood, um, we're trying to gauge whether we have enough interest to have a blood drive here at the church. Um, there's critical need for the blood supply to be boosted up. So if you are interested in that, let us know. I think I will let them greet one another this morning, Charles. It's a beautiful day. So stand, greet one another with God's love and peace this morning. Say hello.
lamentations and create our own lament. So to help us prepare, we're going to, you can remain seated at sea out of the depths, and then I will kind of walk us through. Um, I think, does everybody have their little card, their lament card? Okay, and if you're at home, I'll walk you through. You don't necessarily need a card. You can just write it out on whatever you have handy where you're sitting. So let's sing together to prepare for our time of lamenting. Our own person. 
personal um, releases of expectations or things that we thought were going to be that are not. Remember we wrote on that dissolving paper and placed those in the baptismal font to kind of release them and let them go. We had a Sunday where we sat in anger and acknowledged that anger is very much a real part of when we let things go or when things feel like you're shifting, the disorientation can leave us angry. And that there are ways to respond to our anger that are faithful. And there are some things that should anger us and prompt us and lead us to change in our lives and justice for the world. And then last week, we considered how crucial it is that we do this together and not on our own. That we are the body of Christ. And so when we lament, we lament together. For when one member hurts, we all hurt. So we're not alone in our tears. We're not alone in our letting go. We're not alone in our grief and sorrow. We are held together by the body of Christ. And so today it's time for you and I to create our own lament and put some words to that which we are feeling, to examine our hearts, to confess, to be aware of where we might be falling short or be aware of what where others are falling short for us, to be honest about the spaces we need God's grace to get in and do some work. This is a spiritual, faithful practice of awareness Instead of talking around what we might be feeling or ignoring it all together, which we, who's really good at that? I am really good at ignoring how I'm feeling, pushing it down as far as we can go today, we bring it to the surface. And we share it openly and honestly with God because we know that our God is a God of love. And God holds it very gently with grace. We today practice faith fully awake, not half asleep. And we believe that God is still working in us and in this world. God is still at work. And our voices of lament, they might just be God's voice breaking through in our hearts, in our church, and in our community. When we lament, that is God breaking through to show us places of brokenness that need to be healed and places that need to receive God's love. Our laments should awaken us to where we need to stop and turn around and return to God. That's Lent. That's what we'll be doing during this period of time leading us up to Easter, we're turning to God because we wander off. So laments in the book of Psalms follow a general pattern. They have basic elements that are right there on your card. And what we're going to do today is take them one at a time, and I'm going to share a scripture. We're going to sing um, a verse of a hymn, and then you're going to have some space to write that particular part of the lament. And then when we get to the end, you'll have some space to sit and pray your lament and offer that prayer up and acknowledge that it's God's voice breaking through. So let's have just a moment of prayer, and then we'll begin with our address to God. So take a deep breath in. Oh God, it's an opportunity for us to be honest and to wake up and to be aware. Aware of where we are feeling disoriented, aware of what needs to be released. Aware maybe of those places in us that are angry, that are grieving, that are hurt. And to offer them to you. Because we're also going to acknowledge that we trust you. 
We have faith in you, and we need you. So hear us, O oh God, and hold us as we will you. Amen. So the first part of the lament is the address, or the cry to God, and this is identifying however you want to address God. The, the name that you want to use, the characteristic that you really need God to be for you right now. So hear this from Psalm 4. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. This first hymn is A Mighty Fortress is Our God. So we'll sing the first verse.
believer that nothing is either or, or, that we live in a life of both and. So we live in a space of lament and acknowledgement of trust in God. And it doesn't have to be either or, it can be both and. And even in laments that the psalmist wrote, they would offer a complaint and then they would express their trust in God. So that is your next section, verbalizing, writing out your trust in the Lord. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call out. We'll sing, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, and then you can write out your confession of trust.
off, we offer praise to God, praise and thanksgiving for our many, many blessings. In peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. What words can convey your praise and thanksgiving to God? Let's sing together the first verse of I'll praise my maker while I threat. God's voice break through in some of your words? It counts. So I'm going to invite you to now pray your prayer that you have in front of you. And Charles is going to play this beautiful piece of music that I heard earlier. It's um, to let all mortal flesh be silent. And um, it's just space for you to pray your prayer of lament.
lids and even use them as a, as a new prayer practice maybe every day to just kind of go through those sections of lament. And uh, moms and dads, I even do this kind of with kids in chapel. I ask them to consider things that are making them sad and I just give them a space to think about that or things that are making them angry just so we acknowledge and then we talk about things that are making them excited or happy. But just to acknowledge that we all have feelings of lament. And it is okay for us to express those honestly and openly to God. And they move us to a space of Alleluia. So next Sunday, Palm Sunday, we're going to be in the threshold space. That liminal space, the in-between space from lament to Alleluia. And what that space means and can look like. So thank you for practicing your faith this morning and for offering up an honest expression of your prayers to God and letting God's voice break through. Let's stand together as we are moving towards Alleluia. We're going to march a little bit more and sing the remainder of marching to Zion.